Yo, it's Smallmouth Crush. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be part two of Is It Worth It Fishing Tournament series. Part one was all about fishing the local tournaments, the BFLs, and I broke down my 2017-2018 season. And we kind of came to a conclusion that it's just a hobby. That's all it is. A fun hobby at that. So I wanted to break down my costs associated with fishing at the regional levels, at the opens. And so today's video is going to be all about fishing the FLW Costa Series. I'm going to break down my 2017-2018 season. Did the math already. Let's see if we can make some money fishing regional events. It's all coming up. So let's get into it. Let's talk about fishing at the regional level. I'm going to break down 2017, 2018, all my costs associated with that. I'm not going to go into great detail on how I came up with these totals because if you watch my part one, which will be in the description below, you'll know how I came up with that. But in 2017, I fished the Costa Northern Opens and back then entry fees were $1,600. Uh, first event was on Lake Champlain. I entered that and took 25th place, 25th out of 195 boats. They paid down 51 spots in that event, so if you took 51st, you made $2,000. So you got your entry fee back plus 400 bucks. Lodging for me that week was roughly $720. I think if you're gonna commit to fishing an open uh, tournament, you know, a, a $1,600, 1800 $1,900 entry fees, you're gonna to wanna to put some time in during practice. So I would recommend a Friday or a Saturday. You got Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you got five, six days of practice and then you get into the uh, three day event if you're fortunate enough to make the third day. So you wanna put some time in, you wanna stay there for a good week and you got fuel, right? Cost me about $484 to head on up to Champlain from here with the boat and truck and I burned about 30 gallons a day probably a little bit more but easy math 30 gallons a day was about $720 for the event gotta get your license miscellaneous stuff here and there I put 50 bucks food I just did 20 bucks a day that's on the lighter side but we'll go with it 160 so total cost for me to fish on Lake Champlain in 2017 was $3,734 now I won $2,665, so I was only down $1,070. Not too bad, it was fun, but I'm in the hole of grand. Next event was Thousand Islands. We had 177 boats in that event and ended up taking 24th. So break it all down, they paid me $2,770, but I spent $3,500, so I lost another 800 bucks. I was doing pretty good at that point, heading into the Potomac River, and that was a tough bite in August, as I recall, but I ended up taking third. I got a good paycheck out of the deal, 12 grand, 12,600 bucks for a third place finish. There was 160 boats in that event. And that actually, that finish allowed me to take second in points that year in Angler of the Year. So I was close to winning that one. I was actually just off by a little bit. We were just hoping the number one guy would have slipped slightly, but it, it did not happen, and we came in second. But it cost me $2,900 in expenses. Subtract that from the 12 grand I won, I made just under 10,000 bucks. I made $9,690 that week. So the cool thing about the Costas, if you qualify in points, you actually end up going to an entry fee, no entry fee championship. This event was down on Kentucky Lake. So of course I still had the expense of traveling down there and lodging and food and all that. But uh, I had a travel buddy and I stayed with uh, a few buddies that week as well. So the expenses weren't as bad. I spent about $1,300 that week uh, fishing the championship on Kentucky Lake 
ended up taking 26th place and they paid me 2500 for that. So I was up 1200 bucks on Kentucky Lake. So second in points, I didn't have a terrible season, but what saved me was that top, you know, third place finish, top five, will at least get you some loot. Unfortunately, that 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th place, the money just isn't there. You're breaking even still if you have a top 10 finish for the most part. So I made $20,535 fishing the Costas back in 2017. It cost me $11,475. Raw expenses. I'm not talking about tackle and line and all that as well, but just fuel, food, licenses, stuff like that. Lodging. So I made nine grand. Not bad. Still not a living, but it's a hobby where you're making a little bit of loot. Nothing wrong with that. But let's say you have a mediocre year, an average year, which is kind of how I felt 2018 went for me. I ended up in 13th in points last year. We started out in Champlain again. Not going to break it all down, but I won 2100 bucks, And it cost me 3600 that week. So I made like 1500 bucks. Then we go to Lake Erie. Now the Costas have been known to cancel tournaments and this was certainly the case on Lake Erie. One day it was rough and I get it. Let's cancel the event. But they actually postponed, canceled two days. So it was a one day tournament. That's a big entry fee and a lot of expenses for a one day event. Fortunately, it kind of went both ways for me. I have mixed feelings about Lake Erie. Number one is I had some equipment failure. I ended up taking eighth place. However, all my fish died. It was nothing I did wrong. It was just a freak of nature, freak accident, freak of mechanical problems that just didn't work out for me and my fish died. That cost me about, I think it cost me about eight, nine grand to have those fish died. I would have had a much higher finish if that was, uh, if there wasn't a fish penalty added to my, uh, subtracted from my weight. And unfortunately we only got to fish one day. I made $6,200 with an eighth place finish. Cost me 3,500, I was up 26. So it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad going into the third stop, which was Thousand Islands. Unfortunately, a body of water I have high confidence on, I felt good, but it was an off, off year and things weren't lining up like I would have liked. And I struggled, I took 72nd, zero. Made no money, but spent 3,400 bucks that week. So that one hurt. Then of course, 13th in points, you get to go to the no entry fee championship on Lake Gundersville, where I sucked again. 69th place, cost me $1,500 to get down there and back and fish. And so in 2018, it cost me just under $12,000 in expenses, but I made 8,300. So we got a loss of 3,600 bucks. So you can see if you have a mediocre year, 13th in points, you're losing money. How do we do two years combined? Well, second in points, 13th in points. 2017, I made nine grand. 2018, I lost 3,600. So in two years, I made $28,835 fishing. It cost me just under 24 grand with a profit of $5,378. Divide that by 24 months. Hey, I made $224 a month. Who can complain about that? So I think bottom line is it's tough. Uh, it's tough even at the open level to make some cash, which leads me to my decision on what I'm gonna do for 2019. And here's my thoughts. So a couple, couple things at the opens, uh, the Costas. 
that I want to explain. They actually increased the price to $1,900 for entry fee. So it's up 300 bucks from two years ago and I think up 200 from last year without really increasing the payout. So there's going to be some more costs associated with that. And, uh, you know, what is it, an extra couple tanks of gas? It is what it is. Uh, I've actually decided not to fish the Costas this coming season. I'm going to stick specifically to the BFLs just to still stay in the game and have some fun. But the big reason for me not fishing the coast is a lot of the guys I used to travel with and uh, you know my roommates when we were fishing the opens, they decided not to fish the opens as well. And so, you know, I, I really enjoy the camaraderie hanging out with those guys and it's it's just maybe this is the year I I step back and fun fish something I really miss. I One thing fishing all these tournaments the last two years, it didn't allow me to have a lot of free time on the water, specifically when I wanted to be somewhere. I like to fish places when the bite's on, when it's a lot of fun. And I'm not saying that the schedule's bad by any means, but there's times when I wish I could be on a different body of water and instead I'm sitting there for seven days trying to focus on how I'm gonna win a tournament and a lot of guys think that jumping into a bigger, you know, higher entry level or a bigger field or more com competition will make them a better angler. And for me, that's not the case. It might be for you, but my theory on that is I learn a lot when I'm just out exploring, developing my, my skills on the water, not under pressure, and just learning the different conditions and different techniques to, to fish. That's how I become a better angler. You're really competing against the fish. You have to be able to go out on that body of water. I don't care if there's 200 boats or 10 and be able to bring in those big bags of fish and learn how to do that efficiently. And for me, practicing in a tournament where you're not sticking all the fish and you're not hitting your stuff hard just doesn't, you know, doesn't do it for me as far as learning. Now you certainly can learn in that environment. You learn how to manage your fish and how to compete, but I want to fine tune my skills a little bit more and I want to just have a little bit more fun doing it. So the plan is moving forward for this year, as of right now, is to put out some great content for you guys with my YouTube channel. I want to do more how to's on the water, I want to share with you guys some of the different approaches that I take and just have fun doing it. I got a lot of plans tripped, a lot of plans, I have a lot of trips planned for up north upstate New York. We're going to do some fishing on the Finger Lakes this year and I'm going to spend a lot of time guiding on the Chesapeake Bay, my, my local body of water right now. And so I'm looking forward to that. So as of right now, we're going to step back from fishing the coasts in 2019 and just go out and have fun and develop my skills even more. You know, so is it worth it for you to, you know, fish the opens, uh, to take that next step? If you haven't fished the opens yet, or if you're thinking about doing it, you know, if you can afford it, and you want to go out, by all means, it's it's awesome. I love the competition. I'm going to definitely miss it, but it just doesn't make sense for me. I think it's a platform. Do you want, what do you want to do with these opens? It's a great way if you want to qualify for the FLW Tour. In order to qualify for the FLW Tour, you have to do well in the opens to do that. You know, I turned down the tour two years in a row just because I know financially it doesn't make sense for me at this point. All right, so that's the plan. We're gonna go have some fun this year. Now, I'm not saying I'm 100% certain that I'm not fishing the Costas because there's a couple variables. Number one is the first northern coast is on Lake Champlain a week after a BFL. Am I gonna get the itch in July? A couple of weeks prior, if I can still get in, I'm gonna be up there, I don't know. Tell you what, if I can find a sponsor and it makes sense for the sponsor as well as myself to fish and they'll help split the tab, maybe pay for entry fees, I may do it. But it's going to be hard. Right now my schedule really is planned out through September of next year of where I'm going to be fishing and what I'm going to be doing. So uh, it's going to be hard if I do squeeze that in to, to fish three more events. I mean, it's tough being on the road, being gone all the time. I do want to thank all you guys for watching my videos. Uh, we hit a small 
stepping stone with the channel. I should be over 10,000 10, subscribers here shortly, within the next day or two. I couldn't do it without you guys. I'm gonna continue to grow the channel, continue to put out some content. Right now, we're kinda stuck indoors. I can't wait to get out on the lake. Maybe this late winter. I mean, it's, it's cold out right now, uh, even for the area that I live in. We don't have ice, but I don't really feel like being out on the boat when it's 20 degrees right now. But as soon as it warms up, we're gonna get out there. I got a lot of great videos planned in studio coming up. I'm gonna be talking about some of my favorite color swim baits, specifically Kitek swim baits to throw for smallmouth. We're gonna be doing a video on my favorite drop shot baits for largemouth. So I got some cool videos on some equipment. I got some changes coming up that we're gonna be talking about. And then I'm gonna talk about a specific bait that I've been using for a little bit that I haven't shared with you guys on my, on my channel yet. It's put some good fish in the boat, it's unique. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that. So we got some good videos coming down the pipe. I appreciate you guys subscribing to the channel. If you haven't already, please do so. Hope you enjoy the video and as always, until next time, we'll see you guys on the water.